the life of Lord Mahavira. Continue fasting to rescue Chandana. Part 3 of 5 on Between Master and Disciples, given in Chinese and English on December 1st, 2019, in Taiwan, also known as Formosa. This temple is uh, not, uh, it doesn't look like a normal Buddhist temple. It's just a building, a part of a building attached to, you know, the whole long block, and it's just one part of it. It made into a temple. And the master uh, at that time, he bought that temple just to teach the American disciples. Every three months he go there. And his disciples, uh, I, I count on my finger, maybe about... Uh, 30, 40, you know, small temple, and they come every Sunday to listen to him, and he made retreat with them sometimes, yeah. And the retreat maybe 20 or 20 something people, yeah. So it's not like a temple that is famous, yeah. It doesn't look like a temple outside, it's just a normal apartment, okay. It has a Two story and a basement. Yeah, the basement is a kitchen, cooking, and eating community. And the first floor is for uh, for the Buddhas, the hall and meditation. The uh, third floor is a, a living quarter. I have one small room in there. Yeah, and the master live in the front. I live in the back. Yeah, one room, yeah. uh, separate by a corridor and an empty room. Yes. So uh, if, I, if I were to go outside long distance and come back and not written the address of the temple, I would have got lost. <laughs> but they found the temple all right, ring the bell. I was alone. The, the abbot, he came back and forth, you know? He has a green car, came back and forth. So anyway, they came in, you know, and tell me. They described what the inner guy told, told them about me. Say, I would give initiation, and you can have the sound, you can hear the ocean. So I thought she cannot be lying. And I asked her if she know anything about the light and sound method, yeah, and about certain such teaching, you know, at least similar teaching or something. Did she read anything? I said, no, no idea. <laughs> Just the guy told us to come here, and you will give us the uh, spiritual anointment, and then we will hear the ocean, even if we don't have ocean, something like that. So I thought they cannot be lying. What for? They lied to me. Yeah. Because I was, I did not uh, plan to <laughs> initiate anybody. I'm just living in temple, cleaning bathroom and floor every day. And then so I say, okay, but uh, you have to be a uh, vegetarian, huh? I say, yes, we are already. Because in their tradition also, maybe like that. Oh, very sincere, good experience. And then they keep coming to see me sometimes afterwards, yeah? And then meditate with me all alone. I give them the room that the abbot always reserved to see his disciples during the retreat, yeah? So, so I say, you stay down there, I stay in my room, because I cannot give you the upstairs room. Upstairs only one room for the master, and the other room for meditation. Also upstairs there's one meditation room for the disciple when they come. In the morning, they come meditate with him. Oh, before that, I was thinking they're mistaken. They said, if you are looking for the abbot, he's not here. You come back in two months, he will be back here. And uh, his name is not Ching, I told him. He's a Buddhist monk. So they say, no, no. They say, Master Ching. <laughs> I say, yeah, maybe Master Chi, yeah? Master Chi. I mean, he's a man. Maybe Chi is India for great master, eh? People always say Guru Chi, yeah? Maharaji, Mataji, <laughs> Babu Chi, Baba Chi, everything. Chi means great. So I think maybe that's what your guy meant by Master Chi, but he's not here. And then she said, no, no. 
because the guy say it's a woman. And uh, does the abbot teach the ocean, <laughs> ocean method? I said, no, I, he doesn't know anything about the ocean stuff. So she said, then it's not. Do you know? They asked me if I know anything about ocean sound. I say I know some. <laughs> and they say, that's you then. You, you're a woman, and you know about the ocean sound inside. So it's not the abbot that we are looking for. So then I had to give them initiation. Yeah, they came from a long way. And I give them food to eat and extra, and then they came back some other time. But they are afraid of ghosts. They're supposed to be ghostbusters, you know, they are the kind of exorcist people. They can see ghosts, all right. Yeah. And then uh, one day they came to me, and they, they came up to me, can we sleep with you upstairs? I said, small room. I, I'm not used to with sleeping with other people. You have all the room downstairs. It's more comfortable. And the bathroom, everything for you. You know, toilet, so easy. She said, no, there's so many ghosts down there, about 300 at least of them. Yeah, I said, well... <laughs> I said, it's a temple, you know, ghosts are also welcome. <laughs> it didn't say outside that ghosts could not come. I said, besides, the temples are feeding the ghosts every day also. You know, symbolic with the mantra, and then you multiply it, it's just symbolic, throw a few drops of water and some little rice, and then you multi multiply it, and then the ghosts come and also listen to us chanting Buddhist sutra and, and liturgy, something like that, okay. Can you check on internet for me? You know, like feeding goes or praying to God before you eat. Ah, a long time I didn't use that word. So that wise, this is their home. <laughs> so it's natural that they stay here, but they will not harm you, I promise. Because look at me and the abbot, and other people, they come and go. You know, I stay here, nothing happened. Don't worry. Besides, if the ghosts can be downstairs, they can also come upstairs, you know. So what's the difference? <laughs> so <laughs> the ghosts, <laughs> I say the ghosts, they're free, freer than us. They just zoop upstairs just like that, quicker than us going by stairs. So if you come in here, what's the difference? So she say, no, no, it's different. There are no ghosts here. They only stay downstairs. Here you only have uh, three, four masters with you. And there's a master with a big, long bear. He, he, his name is Baba Sawan Singh. And other masters, she names all the master and all that, you know. <laughs> and I said, to, when, when I initiated her, she saw Baba Sawan Singh inside. And he told her uh, his name and said that he and I are one. Baba Sawan Singh and I are one, yeah. Why, why? <laughs> mm. I thought I told you that before, I didn't, no? I did not? Okay. And I said, how do you know, name Baba Sawan Singh? He said, he told me inside. You know, they are very sincere and very, uh, you know, spiritually pure. Huh? And then uh, I, I was uh, also say, oh, okay, if he says so, then is it so? <laughs> the master would not lie to you. For what reason? <laughs> the inner experience, you know, and she see that the Baba Sawan Singh took her, you know, into the to see God in the throne of God. Yeah. And she was crying, crying. She said, I never imagined, I never all my life I never imagined that I could even go to near the throne of God and speaking to him like that. Uh, at that time, it's not a very high God yet, at least, you know, within the fifth world. But still, she was crying, crying. Oh, she cried nonstop. I say, oh, stop, or why you will dry out. You know? <laughs> I will not see you anymore. I say, where are Azula? Where, where? <laughs> so I gave her a drink and all that, and okay. They all have good experiences inside at that time, yeah. And then they even came to Taiwan to see me. At that time, I live in a jungle, a forest, you know. Young Minsan, we didn't have house or anything, we just have a tent. And there's a, they somehow they put some metal sheet together, make it into a square little hut for me. Yeah. I let her stay in there. And then she's afraid of ghosts again. 
Oh. I say, you just imagine, you ask these nuns, at that time I have about, I don't know, more than ten nuns and monks with me together, and we share clothes. We didn't have enough money to buy clothes. Yeah. I gave them my clothes, I keep only one for myself, because we didn't have enough money to buy clothes. None close, yeah, and then hey, we okay, we okay. Anyway, <laughs> we were happy. <laughs> we didn't have a lots of money, but we were happy. I think I grow some sprouts and vegetables to sell. <laughs> then we had a little money somehow. I can't remember how we survived. And the nuns they were making some leaflets, you know, like a, a weekly uh, news, <laughs> one paper, <laughs> one piece of paper, to copy some of the talk. Uh, I talked to them and then they I send it or to whomever, yeah. <laughs> so we had a big tent, you know, about um, three, four meter long and two meter wide. And she came and I let her stay in the metal sheet uh, hut already and she's still scared of ghosts. Coming to tell me, oh, so many ghosts here, how you live here? I said, we live. <laughs> it's, they live here before, before we came. So we should just apologize to them <laughs> that they, they let us also stay. Because that mountain called Yang Ming Shan, you know, is a national park. Except for those who already stay there, long, long, long ancestry uh, left behind a house that nobody can build anymore, houses. And it's supposed to be very haunted area. They make a lot of joke about it, you know. Like uh, sometimes some taxi driver don't dare to take people to that area because when they pay the money, uh, it's not real. When they come back, they realize it's, it's ghost money. It's not real. <laughs> it's a special, a special type of ghost money. Oh, yeah, so she is a witness. I'm not lying, okay? I heard only, but I wasn't sure. We live there. Nobody, no ghost ever dare come to us. We are just more <laughs> vicious than ghosts or something. <laughs> I said, don't worry. We are initiated into Kuan Yin method. No ghost can do anything to you. Besides, you are Ghostbuster. You are master of Ghostbuster. You do exorcism. How are you afraid of ghosts? <laughs> then, if your client heard about this, how would they come to you again? <laughs> she said, "Oh, too many, too many, and big, big ghosts, big ghosts." I said, "Big or small, they don't do nothing to us. You know, we all live here together in harmony. Because we do no harm to them, they do no harm to us. Yeah." Hey, this she still tried to come to me all the time with the ghost stuff. So I give her some fruit, whatever we had. She said, oh, this good fruit, you know. The ghosts eat, they will not touch you. <laughs> <laughs> they will not go near. No ghosts will bother us, you know. They, they just let us see them. If we see or not, we don't really care, you know. The ghosts don't dare to appear in front of me and, and my nuns and monks at that time. Hmm. Or maybe we were blind, you know, <laughs> or deaf <laughs> to the world. People say when you're deaf, you're not afraid of cannon or guns. <laughs> you're nothing. <laughs> because of that, we one time make a very naughty joke, you know. We say, don't come home so late. <laughs> uh, and then uh, another, I said to nuns and monks, sometimes they have to go out, buy stuff, you know, buy food or something. I don't remember how we survived there. At least we have water. There's a stream running <laughs> around our tent, and the stream water is so beautiful, so crystal, crystal clear. Mm. And we survive because we have water there, so we don't care. You know, we used to drink worse water than that dirty water of when we were had no place. We run around on the street. Any water we drink and nothing happened. Truly, we are protected. Yeah, because some, some water, you know, dirty, very dirty. But we just use uh, our cloth, you know, our monk's rope or something, you know, filter it and then cook. Yeah. But the water truly was very dirty. But sometimes we have nowhere else to go. We cannot find anywhere else. We were on the street, you know. And so we just drink anything, and no problem. Over there we had, you know, we just had that uh, 
a piece of land and then the water running all year round. Small stream but running all the time and beautiful, clear. First time we see the clear stream that nobody tempered with it, and no contamination. Wow, we were so lucky and happy. We plan to stay there forever. <laughs> No, Mangshan just feeding the Busura. Just you found it? Mitaji, it says Mitaji means customary public worship performed by religious group. Customary public worship performed by a religious group, that's correct. Liturgy also, uh, we praise God and we thank God, you know, for eating and for the food that we eat. Yeah. That form of worship, pray, uh, praying is called liturgy. Yeah. And also in Buddhist, we also thank the Buddha and all that, and then we feed some to the ghost. So actually, the ghost did come. <laughs> uh, 300 plus of them. Yeah. So we have witness. <laughs> Queen Azula saw it. <laughs> I think she's still alive in America. Long time no see. I keep changing areas, so I don't think she can ever catch me anymore. Oh, when I get was a monsang, just a gong yang la. No man, chow ke wang ke na ke la, just a little chi. Huh? Taman tian zhu jiao ye you la. Huh? Okay? Little chi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so there's a joke about the liturgy, yeah. There was a, a priest, yeah, went to Africa trying to spread the teaching of Jesus, yeah, but he has to went through a jungle and he caught the lion. The lion wanted to eat him, definitely, cannot run. So the priest knelt down and <laughs> and uh, say, say, say some, some stuff, yeah. And uh, the lion said, what are you saying? Because he said, let, let me... Let me do liturgy first before before you eat me. So he kneeled down, kneeled down and prayed to God and say, thank you and all this and, uh, you know, save my soul stuff, you know. And then the, the lion, the lion also knew, yeah. And then also, <laughs> so the priest say, I am kneeling to pray to God and, you know, to pray to, to save my soul and help me and what are you kneeling for? The lion say, I before eating you have to make liturgy, you know. <laughs> before having a meal you have to give thanks. <laughs> Do the liturgy. <laughs> That's how I remember the word liturgy. <laughs> okay. The pious lion, huh? Yeah. <laughs> if I were to continue Breatharian, I guess I cannot do this job. It's a different field, yeah. I probably have better life, <laughs> yeah. But I don't think I can do much uh, further work or enlarge work, yeah, like what I'm doing right now. But sometimes I say to myself, you busy body, <laughs> how can you do all this? Even the Supreme Master Television is a big work for me already. How I have even dogs, I have to put on makeup, wear clothes, design, all that thing, <sighs> and business. Business oh, also give me trouble sometimes. The staff and, you know, the tax and the accounting stuff. Mm. Sometime I thought, oh man, <laughs> you are truly a busy body, aren't you? <laughs> I talk to myself, I scold myself. So you are the only one to be blamed. No God, no Maya, no Satan, no demon, no one. You, the only one. Because one thing leads to another, you understand? If you have business, you have to take care of this and that and that. If you give initiation, you have to go and see this and that people. You have to take care of them inside out. Huh? It's not like uh, I, you can come and sit here and I feel nothing from you. I don't feel any tug, any pull, any <laughs> crying, all, all that stuff. 
Yeah? It's not like I give you initiation and then I don't hear that you at home having trouble, tuck in as master photo and one this, one that. It's okay if you really need. But sometimes you don't even need. You just ask for this and that to test the master. This thing won't work. Do your homework, okay? You pray to master when you need, of course, but not always abusing our relationship. Hmm? Yeah. Not like you just get married and have a child and then no problem. <laughs> no. <laughs> problem comes, yeah, with the marriage and with the child. You didn't know that until you're in. <laughs> Similar, no? just uh, one wife, one child, and one job, and one house, and you already have a lot of problems. Mm. I have many houses, because before I keep running around, and every, every country I buy this and buy that, yeah, for ashram, and then later it becomes too small, and then I can't even sell it, it takes some time. And before I had nobody with me to help me, so it, I put it in my name. And now I had to go there to take care, because some country don't accept, uh, like just uh, how you say, um, authorized letter or passport. You have to go in person, in front of a notar or a lawyer. Blah blah blah. I know no end to trouble. No end to trouble. Yeah. <laughs> 